Hello, this is Mark Isselhart, Maple Specialist with the UVM Extension, and this presentation is entitled Maple Flavor, the Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. We'll review what makes uh, good flavored syrup, uh, some issues that can happen when flavor isn't quite what we hope for or expect, and then there's some issues with, uh, with really poorly uh, off-flavored syrup or issues to avoid in the future. So I think it's important to start with some basics. What is flavor and, and how does it relate to maple? Flavor is, is actually an interaction between both taste and odor. And, and by that, we mean there's an interaction with your taste buds, you know, some sort of anatomical stimulus that's happening. And then there's also the odor, the odor of that material you're ingesting. Typically, people talk about tastes as falling into the categories of salt, sweet, sour, bitter, and umami. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar, umami is sort of a savory type sensation, something that, that makes whatever food you're eating especially rich and, uh, and flavorful. Sometimes it's described as, <clears throat> as being the, the thing that really makes something's flavor really stand out. The thing to remember about flavor and odor is that odor can be impaired. Think about it in terms of if you've ever had a cold and, and the foods you normally really like just don't taste quite right or don't taste very good at all. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that your part of your senses, your, your olfactory senses, are, are impaired and you're not able to, to smell and taste the way you normally are. The other thing that's important to remember about flavor is that some people are just inherently better at, at, at perceiving flavor. And part of that is anatomical. They just have a higher concentration of taste buds and they're able to taste better. It's not always just anatomical though. People who have had a lot more experience and are really dialed into a certain set of flavors are going to be better at discerning flavor and in, in, in maple, um, grading flavor is going to be easier for, for some folks than others. But it's not impossible and uh, with enough experience you can really you can really do well. And and what I like to say is that maple normally tastes good. You you expect a certain thing when you when you taste it and, and that's great. There's a lot of hard work that goes into making this stuff and by and large it tastes really good. Unfortunately uh, as my colleague Kathy Hopkins here can attest, not every bit of syrup tastes good. So it's important to make sure you're tasting every batch and uh, be aware that there can be issues and if you taste something odd, it's time to try to figure out what that problem was. So before we get too far along, I want to make sure that people know that um, how flavors are made is important. So uh, flavor, uh, maple syrup is not just uh, concentrated sap. It's actually a different material itself and those flavors and colors are formed in the evaporator. So you need to have heat and you need to have the uh, reactions called the Maillard reactions. Those need to occur in combination of both heat, water, sugar, and, and amino acids. And these things all take place in the evaporator. And it's not unique to maple. The, uh, these reactions, very, very complicated chemical reactions, occur anytime food is made and, and heated. The uh, infographic here, which is, is pretty complex and not something that I produced, but it, it pretty well illustrates the, the point that depending on how you treat a given food in terms of heat and time and what the food is itself can really impact the flavor. The, react, the, the, the example I like to give is a steak. If you've ever had a really perfectly good steak, it's well seared on the outside and it's nice and juicy on the inside. Um, you know, that is, was produced by someone who was able to control those reactions and, and, and treat that piece of meat really well and, and make a great, a great dish. You've probably all had a piece of meat that wasn't cooked all that well. It was either um, it's cooked long too long or at a low temp and that sort of thing and that's probably not not the kind of uh, the steak that most of us would enjoy. So flavor perception that's really 
goes right along with taste. You know, what are we what are we perceiving as the flavor of this material? And for now, we'll talk about it in terms of, of maple syrup. You know, flavor perception integrates lots of different types of information. So we've already talked about smell. That's the olfactory, the, the ability to sense the smell and taste. So that's your taste buds. But then there's also some other sensory stimuli that you probably haven't heard of or thought about. That would be like somatosensory, which is sort of touch, auditory, visual information, you know, what color that syrup is. So, you know, you're going to have a different type of perception of flavor um, when you look at a sample of syrup like this versus maybe something like that, especially if you know anything about maple, you know that you're probably going to have a slightly different flavor based on the color of the syrup. And the other one for uh, the trigeminal, that's that's pretty out there in the weeds, but that that's really the sensory information you get from the muscles in your face. And I bring this up just because <clears throat> whether or not your syrup is well filtered can actually have a, an impact on your perception of flavor. So if it's a little gritty, that's really going to set people off and it's going to have an Im impact on their enjoyment of that syrup, but also, you know, their, their sensory uh, perception or flavor perception. The other thing about, um, it's probably more of a touch sensation, is syrup density. If syrup is is right at correct density or even a little bit um, above, that's going to have a different flavor perception than if it's under dense and really thin. So think about that, and um, that'll that'll help in in making sure your your product is is well received. Like I said, visual information may be the only clue that that some people have when they're when they're deciding what syrup to buy, and for that reason packing glass, packing syrup in glass is a really is a really good uh, way of marketing your syrup provided of course that it is visually appealing and that's well filtered. You certainly <clears throat> need to make sure it's well filtered before you put syrup in glass. And then the other thing is people bring different experiences so a lot of people like light colored syrup and they're they're really gonna stick with that. Other people might be more inclined to like dark, stronger flavored syrup. And luckily, the new grading standards allow for marketing in the entire crop as long as it's not off flavored. So make sure you know what your customers like and, and try to give it to them. This slide is really just designed to, to highlight um, what we call flavor is weird. And, and flavor is, is, is a very strange thing. It, it's um, it's a hard thing to measure, it's a hard thing to study scientifically, and we all have different experiences. So I found this reference to a paper where it wasn't about maple syrup, but it was uh, sugar solutions that were artificially colored different different uh, shades of, of red. And the researchers found that, that the darkness of the solution actually made people perceive the sweetness as being higher, even if the uh, the syrup or the solution was was less dense. So, um, depending on how dark that syrup was, people might consider it uh, even sweeter. Here's a little bit darker example of that. So maple flavor, um, it, it's one of the l more subjective things um, in terms of grading maple syrup. But in general, lighter colored syrup should be. Uh, more delicate and as you go darker in flavor it should be more robust and stronger and there can be a range within each grade just like there can be a range in color what you really don't want to have is a major disconnect between the, the color and the flavor people who are choosing to buy light colored syrup are likely looking for a delicate flavor and um, the inverse is also true if you have a very dark syrup but doesn't really have a good strong flavor your customers are probably going to be a little disappointed in that so make sure you're 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 tasting every every bit of batch of syrup you're you're canning when you actually enter syrup in a contest and the judges taste it all by and large the most most samples taste good and it is interesting to see how a few really stand out as being exceptional I can't say there's a whole lot of um, 
uh, uh, science behind what makes the the, the consistently award-winning syrup but um, there are a few flavors that, that tend to really get the judge's attention and I'll say it one more time just it's important to, to make sure you taste each batch uh, and this is true of whether you're entering syrup for a contest or for just putting on the on the on the shelf for for sale there's always some syrup that seems to get through both in contests and out in the marketplace so please make sure you always taste all your batches before you put it on sale or enter in a contest so when you're trying to taste syrup or judging the syrup it it's important to make sure you're following a couple of key things and first you want to look at the sample of syrup because that's going to start to stimulate your visual cues and say okay I'm expecting to taste this and then you want to take a take a, a, a smell and that'll take in some of the odors and it'll get you prepared for, for what the syrup will taste like the, one important thing is that during production when you're actually boiling the syrup it can be some the hardest time to really be critical and, and be a good judge because you're kind of saturated with all the steam and there's a lot of activity going on during during production it's probably best to save a small sample and, and taste all your batches at a later time when you're not so hectic in the sugar house but when you do sit down to taste um, you want to um, take a small sip and allow that syrup to kind of coat your entire mouth make sure you're getting all your your taste buds coated with that syrup it can also be helpful to take a second taste right after occasionally there can be some off flavors that linger or don't really present themselves until um, a few seconds after that initial taste also I'll give you some advice um, <laughs> when you're presenting about maple flavor in front of an audience there might be a reporter there and you know you might find yourself quoted in the paper saying something saying something profound like this but um, it it is true you you always want to smell before you before you taste so you are probably familiar that the maple laws have changed um, they've been gone through a long process of it was about 12 or 13 year process of trying to harmonize the various states and provinces grading systems so that there could be some consistency across states and across US and Canada the the biggest point was to try to allow consumers to understand what they're getting and, and, and avoid some confusion one of the big things was that they eliminated the idea of a grade A, grade B, and grade C. This was consistently found to be confusing uh, when consumers were asked. Some people who had never had maple before assumed that grade B was inferior to grade A. In, in fact, it can be just as good high quality. The difference was just the, the name associated with it. So now the top four grades are all grade A and I'm going to go through this briefly the, the four um, the four grades of maple syrup the first one golden delicate um, they different states and provinces have used slightly different language to describe it but it's the golden um, lightly most light colored syrup uh, grade and in Vermont it's called delicately sweet original maple flavor characteristic New York they call it a delicate to mild taste the federal standards the USDA standards call it uh, delicate means mild maple taste and as you go darker in color next is amber rich and you can see that the the um, descriptions tend to get a little bit more descriptive a stronger flavor um, Vermont lot for for whatever reason chooses to say uh, is strong but not unpleasant um, or not strong um, or unpleasant and New York calls it a rich or full-bodied taste basically you're you're just trying to key in your consumers to know not just the color but the flavor what are they expecting to taste and as you know the darker the grade the, the stronger the flavor will be and uh, it goes on 
One innovation with the new grades is that there's actually another grade called Very Dark Strong. Now, this was also um, designed to accommodate consumers' wishes, which was to get dark, dark strong flavored syrup. Uh, at the time, the syrup that was darker than the old grade B had to be sold in a large, relatively large volume, so five gallons or larger. And as long as it's not off flavored, then now producers can sell it in a retail container. The important thing to remember is that very dark strong is not just a, a, a catch all for everything darker than dark robust. It, it needs to be good flavored. It can be very strong, but it can't be off flavored. That's one thing we want to make sure people realize. Now, if the syrup fails to meet those standards in color, clarity, flavor, and density for one of the top uh, grade A syrups, then it falls into what's called processing grade. And so that's syrup that has an objectionable flavor um, and just doesn't meet, doesn't meet grade A standards. And, uh, and that syrup still has some value. It just can't be sold in a retail container as you know, grade A syrup. There are plenty of places to sell this syrup as an ingredient or to use in your own operation as a, um, a uh, an ingredient in another value-added product. So definitely think about that. So flavor preference, you know, like I said earlier, some people are going to be more inclined to purchase the something like the syrup on the right, the lighter grade syrup, and others will be more inclined to have a stronger flavored syrup like you see on the left. As a producer, you're likely to, to have a little bit of each over the course of the season. It's important to know the characteristics of each batch and to, to market it to the people who, who want that particular grade. Recently at the Proctor Center, there's been some research done looking at new ROs and evaporators that process very high concentrated uh, sap. So as opposed to going to 8 or 10 or 15 or even 20 bricks, now machines are available to go uh, as high as 30 or 40 bricks. And that's, that's a very uh, big change and uh, it is technology that's available currently and is becoming more widespread. But the concerns are that if, if you only need two to three gallons of this material to produce a gallon of syrup, does it have the same flavor as maple? So a colleague, uh, Abby Vandenberg, did some work where she had sa samples of syrup that was matched in grade, but one came from high bricks processing and one from more conventional. And what she found was that when you eliminated all other factors, or as many factors as possible, people had a uh, similar liking or felt like the syrups that were made with high bricks had the characteristic of maple syrup similar to that made in more standard conventional levels of, of concentration. The other interesting thing about this work is that uh, each individual pair of samples, now this would be a samples of syrup the same grade, one produced with high concentration, high bricks, and one at a more reasonable or <laughs> at a more conventional level. And each pairs had individuals who extremely liked and extremely disliked those samples. So there were some flavor perceptions, flavor preference, I think, going on with those panelists. But in general, it appears that using a, a standard evaporator or a high bricks type evaporator in this high bricks syrup appears to be about similar to uh, regular RO syrup. Now, occasionally off flavors can occur in, in, in syrup. And there are sort of two big categories that we think about in terms of off flavor. You have mother nature type off flavors. These are ones that are really no fault of the producer whatsoever. It's just the chemistry of the sap has changed either because uh, the time during the season or something about the physiology of the tree has changed or something has, has impacted the chemistry of the sap. And the sap has the biggest part to play in, 
in the flavor of that syrup. So things like metabolism or buddy that you've probably heard about, that would fall under the mother nature type off flavors. Whereas things that, oh, maybe you got your pans a little too shallow and maybe you scorched the pans or maybe you didn't clean your evaporator as well as you had hoped when you were done uh, cleaning the niter off the pans and some of that sanitizer or cleaner was left in there, that maybe it caused a, a, a chemical off flavor. Those are all things that damage the syrup and make them not fit for um, the categories of grade A maple syrup. The other important thing to remember about off flavors is that they can occur at a range of intensities. So you can have, just like in various grades of maple syrup, you can have a, a range in flavor within the grade. With off flavors, you can have mild, me, you know, sort of a medium or a very intense off flavor. And to make things even more complicated, you can have a combination of off flavors. So in other words, you can have a, a scorch that also has a little too much defomer in it, or you could have a buddy that's also fermented. So why don't we get into some of the details about some of these off flavors. Before we do that, though, I want to point out that in Quebec, they have a, a slightly different way of classifying off flavors. They have um, what's considered a, um, a check uh, or a V, which is used to, to uh, denote that there is some sort of defect, but it's not enough to um, call it truly off flavored. And then they have the R or check R. Now, that represents a, um, a significant impact on flavor and uh, it, it needs to be downgraded. And then, just like in the U.S., they have processing grade, and that represents a, um, a very significant uh, impact on, on taste. So in the, in the Quebec system, they have six different uh, R um, categories, and, and they can be anything from number one, which is they call woody, which typically we would consider metabolism. Then they have mold or fermentation, uh, maybe some some sort of chemical off flavor. Number five is uh, buddy, so a late season syrup. And six is a uh, what we call ropey. They call it stringy, and that's also a s severe uh, penalty. In fact, ropey syrup in Quebec is automatically um, they're not paid for the syrup. It's automatically seized and then the producer has to pay to have it destroyed. So they take their ropey syrup very seriously up there. So in terms of mother nature off flavors, um, the, the three most common are what we call metabolism, buddy, and sour. Metabolism is and buddy are somewhat related. They're, they're uh, I would say, more similar than they are different. But they are two different chemicals, and we know a fair amount about the chemicals that make metabolism. We don't have a huge amount of understanding of the physiology about how these flavors form, but it probably has, has a bit to do with the physiology of the tree, a little bit more uh, amino acids or some other flavor precursors in the sap. But we've identified the chemicals that make that flavor, and we've actually identified some methods for producers to mitigate or remove that flavor. If you're interested in learning more about that research, I recommend you check out the Proctor Maple Research Center website publications and look for metabolized syrup papers. Buddy is certainly something that is tied to, uh, to temperature and the tree's exiting dormancy, although we can't really point to a particular stage of bud development and say, well, today you're going to make buddy syrup. It doesn't quite work that way, and there's not always a visual cue um, to say that the syrup would be bad. The important thing to do is to taste every batch, and if you're concerned that a flavor might have creeped in, have, have other people taste it. And, and make sure. It seems like in the sugar house near the end of the season, somewhere in the corner, someone says something like, well, it doesn't taste that bad, 
and that typically is a good sign that you're getting near the end and that you need to be paying extra attention to the flavor of the syrup because you really don't um, you can't have off flavored syrup enter enter the marketplace so this graph is just showing you a period of time where we had uh, very very high temperatures in March uh, five days almost in the 70s and um, it it was so significantly above normal that the um, trees started to exit dormancy and we had a lot of uh, off flavored syrup made right after that and this, for those of you who are not familiar, this is this is what ropey syrup looks like. Um, ropey is sort of an extreme version of sour. It's the result of microbial contamination of the sap. It most often happens when air temperatures are warmer and sap has been allowed to sit for a while. The sugars are actually converted into these long stringy polysaccharides. And as you can see, I can I can pull that that it's not even syrup anymore, but I can pull that material with my finger. Uh, it's very gelatinous. When you try to boil it in the evaporator, it's like it's like boiling jello. It just doesn't work. It just kind of burns and smokes. If you were to have this happen, it's really important that you drain everything that contains any amount of sap or sweet in the evaporator. Get it all drained. Get your sap tanks drained. And if it looks like there's going to be good sugaring weather coming, then clean everything including float boxes and little elbows and sight tubes and really anything get it all nice and clean with hot water and then try to start again once you get good sap flow if you leave any amount of this material around it can spoil otherwise good uh, sap almost like a sourdough sourdough starter now um, Metabolism, uh, for those of you who have never tasted it, is sometimes called woody, like I said, in Canada, and the um, it doesn't appear every year. It can be pretty um, intense or it can be pretty mild. Some people would describe it more as a chocolatey flavor and almost like a cardboardy kind of flavor. It typically does not have a lot of uh, maple flavor associated with it. it. Tends to come and go. It comes during the time of the season when it's maybe very cold and then it warms up dramatically in a very short period of time, um, probably tied to some internal physiology of the tree. Buddy, as we've said, typically shows up near the end of the season and does not need to have a particular cue or a certain amount of bud uh, development to, to cause it to happen. There are some issues with Buddy, uh, especially it seems like they're sh seeing it more and more earlier in the season, not at the very end of the season up in Canada, and they're still trying to figure out ways of mitigating that. But so far, um, the techniques for removing that flavor or preventing it from being formed in the first place haven't really been successful. Now, this is Sour is from the result of letting sap sit too long, and it's the uh, result of some microbial contamination and breakdown of that syrup. In its mild form, it's really just a sour tasting syrup. It's not good. It would not fall under the category of, of grade A maple syrup. When it's really extreme is when you start to get that ropey um, effect and uh, it can be pretty dramatic. I want to show you a quick video here of, uh, of what some ropey syrup looks like. This is a, um, a hydrometer being held above 50 gallons of ropey syrup. So as you can see, a hy normal hydrometer in a normal syrup would have dropped well below that surface. And uh, in this case, since it was ropey, it just sort of stood there on the surface. So definitely not grade A maple syrup. So processing uh, off flavors, like I said before, are really the result of mistakes. You know, th things happen, things get, get pretty hectic in the sugar house, especially uh, when there's a big, big run of sap and things can get overlooked and, and uh, 
off flavors can result. Not always, but they can. So it's important to identify what those off flavors are and try to remedy them or uh, prevent what had caused the off flavors from happening in the first place. <clears throat> Defomer can be a can be an issue. It can also be uh, an oily or waxy sensation on the roof of your mouth or your tongue or depending on what you're using as a defomer it could be like a almost like a burning type spicy sensation on the sides of your tongue. It really depends on what you use. All defomers can um, if they're uh, not fresh they can become rancid and so that would then impart a rancid off flavor to your to your syrup. Definitely not grade A. Uh, some folks who are certified organic are having issues because these oils that are used are just not effective. They're not designed as defomers and you can end up using a lot more than you really need to. So if you are certified organic, please consider how much you use and, and be cautious. The, uh, the picture on the right is, is what we've used for a long time, these sort of automatic drippers where it, uh, you can adjust the screw and it drips in every so often and we've used them for a long time unfortunately if we feel like it really adds too much than than is necessary it, it is adding it no matter what uh, versus adding it when to the level that it really needs it or when it really needs it some people have used uh, spray bottles um, it, that produce a fine mist which might feel like a, a way of reducing the amount being used, but when you add up all that mist into one area, it's actually quite a, quite a bit of defomer. So, so just use as much as you need and avoid using too much. I'll also say that uh, Dr. Abby Vandenberg at the Proctor Center is doing some work trying to identify a very effective or defomer that is allowed under certified organic standards. So stay tuned for that. Metallic is an off flavor that we don't see quite as often as we used to. Um, it, it was much more common when people were packing in metal containers, retail containers uh, that were made of tin or steel. It became less common when those steel containers were uh, produced with an epoxy coating. But we still see that, that metallic sometimes. It can be a little bit more of an issue when people use uh, what are called one-way or um, epoxy lined steel barrels and what can happen is you can have a barrel that might be somewhat okay on the outside but on the inside the uh, epoxy lining has flaked away so this is the inside of that barrel you can see that epoxy lining has flaked off and now there's bare steel that's just able to oxidize and produce a, a pretty nasty off flavor so always look inside any containers that you're filling and, and that's true of bulk containers or retail containers make sure that those containers are clean and there's nothing in them also inspect the bung that you're using here's an epoxy coated bung that is flaking off and the galvanization is visible um, remember too that if you have a nylon there should be a nylon gasket around the bung if those are not uh, intact, they can also uh, allow air to get in and uh, impact your flavor. Scorch, scorch happens. Um, the saying is that there's there's, uh, there's sugar makers who burn their pans and then there's people who don't tell the truth um, and uh, it, it happens. You know, things get, get a little crazy in the sugar house and next thing you know you, you've got a, a bottom of your pan that looks like this. So remember to monitor your depth that you're boiling. Be careful about it and if you um, if you have that burned off flavor make sure it doesn't get into a retail container. Ferment is another issue um, that producers can run into. This is a sort of fermentation of, of, of maple syrup. It can occur with low density syrup, but not always. It can be a correct density syrup. It really has more to do with syrup being exposed to, to air and, as well as a um, fermenting material like a yeast. 
it appears to be more of an issue in bulk containers in plastic barrels. Very little ferment syrup is a, um, occurring in metal barrels. If you can see in the background this picture, this plastic barrel has a really bowed out top. And that means that there's some fermentation going on. There's um, gas being produced and it's blowing, blowing that plastic barrel up. Here's another example of a plastic barrel where the top really should be sunken in if it was hot packed and, and not fermented. And unfortunately this one is. And it becomes a safety issue too. These plastic barrels, if they're stacked um, more than one high, run the risk of, of really bulging out and, and falling and then having other barrels on top falling over. So please be careful. Musty, um, that tends to be an issue a little more with uh, cone filters, people who are using uh, gravity filtering to, to clarify their syrup and maybe have cone filters that haven't been cleaned well or were cleaned but then put away when they were still damp. So if you are using a cone filter, make sure you clean them very well and then make sure they're absolutely dry before you put them away in storage. We have also had issues where um, otherwise good cone filters were put in containers that imparted an off flavor. Um, probably the most notable one was someone who was taking their cone filters and feeling like they were doing the right thing by putting it in a blanket chest, but the blanket chest also had mothballs and it uh, unfortunately imparted that flavor into the filters, which then got put into the syrup. Another thing to think about is your diatomaceous earth. If you're using a filter press, it's important to make sure your DE does not get wet because if it does, it can get musty or moldy. You may not notice it in the powder, but when you actually put that DE into your filter press and then the syrup goes through that moldy DE, it can really impart a moldy flavor. So um, make sure you're only buying food grade DE make sure that you are only buying as much as you really need for the season because the more you hold on to the easier it is to have something happen to that material so just keep on hand what you need and remember that this DE here's a zoomed in picture of that that material those really really fine pores those little holes you see on that DE that's where those mold um, spores can hang out that's the same reason why it's so good at being a filter but they're so fine they can really hold on to these little mold spores and then damage your syrup. So there aren't a lot of sanitizers being used in maple. It's um, you know really hot water and, and a little bit of elbow grease can go a long way to, to cleaning things. Some people do choose to use a dilute solution of bleach but you have to be very careful and make sure it gets very, very well rinsed afterward. Any kind of chemical off flavor can really destroy uh, otherwise good tasting syrup. So be very cautious about your concentrations and make sure that you're doing an abundant amount of rinsing before you put sap or syrup back in. One more thing I wanted to point out is that there's a lot of examples of repurposing equipment and you know we know that maple equipment is expensive and it's tempting to use something that you know might outwardly seem like a good fit for maple either a plastic barrel or a plastic tote um, the kind you see with a metal cage around them just remember that it, it if it if the container doesn't have a food grade designation to begin with then you really have to assume it isn't food grade and so that plastic could be made up of anything. It could be ground up um, quart oil containers or it could be you know some sort of chemical. It just it wasn't designed to be in contact with food and so you really should not uh, use it for sap or syrup. The other thing is if it does have a food grade designation that doesn't necessarily mean that it's good for any foods throughout its whole lifetime. So in other words, if you buy a tote from someone on, say, Craigslist, and it uh, looks great, looks clean, but it held garlic oil or some other very aromatic thing, 
you're probably not going to be able to get that flavor out and you're going to end up damaging your syrup as a result. So that's pretty quickly uh, what might have seemed like a good deal at the time um, rapidly goes down as far as uh, being a good deal. So really be cautious about that. Um, I know some people will will repurpose buckets from say Home Depot as sap buckets, but you know these are not food grade and they are pretty clear about it right on their website. So please be be really careful and we are talking about a very high quality food product here. So it's important to uh, to to think about that. Here's an example of one of those totes. Um, you know, you really need to know what that material was in those totes if they have been previously used. And just because it says approved by FDA, that just means that when that container was brand new, it was approved. And you just don't know what's in that plastic anymore. So be very care careful. Slides. I will point out that we at the UVM extension have a resource to help with some off flavors. We have the reference kit that represents the most common natural, uh, naturally occurring or mother nature off flavors and uh, buddy, sour sap and metabolized are available. There will be a second set coming out shortly that will include ferment, defomer and scorch. So please stay tuned for that and contact me or the Vermont Maple Sugar Makers Association if you're interested in getting some of those uh, off flavor kits. So thanks for listening, and if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me either through my email or phone, and I urge you to check out the UVM Extension Maple website. It is also up on the screen right now. Please let me know if you have any questions about flavor or concerns about something you can't quite identify as a flavor. Thank you very much.